so in this video I'm going to show you the very simple setup. This is the way I have it set up for my students in my Monday night workshop. And you can see I have a flat surface here, but this is actually a drawing board that tilts up so I can use it for um, painting and have the painting up like an easel or I can lay it flat if I'd rather draw or paint on a flat surface. Um, we only use three brushes in the Monday Night Workshop. I have a number eight flat angled brush and I have a little small number six round brush and then I have a number four filbert brush. I also have a small palette knife and I like the ones that have a slight angle to the handle. And then I'll also have a rubber paint wipeout tool. This is my best friend when I'm doing a small daily painting or any oil painting really. So in this demonstration, I'm using the eight by 10 canvas. This is a flat panel and I've got it primed with the mid-tone primer that I talk about in the other video where I batch multiple canvases and prime them and get them all ready so it saves a lot of time. And then I have the glass palette here with um, actually a piece of masonite underneath that's painted the same color tone as my canvas primer. So I'll, I'll explain a little bit more of that when I talk about color mixing. And then I have the colors that we'll need, alizarin and crimson and cad red light. This is actually a hue and so we'll use these two to make our primary red and we'll also use alizarin crimson by itself for some things and then we'll use cad red light by itself for some things. And then I've got ivory black and titanium white. I use different browns based on different situations so I always have these three browns in my toolbox. I have burnt umber or burnt sienna or raw umber. So for this painting of the maracas, I'll be using burnt sienna for the brown place in my palette. Um, other colors to have handy are raw sienna. I use this when I'm painting gold. Um, let's see, and then I also have Cad Red Light, the pure version. This actually has cadmium in it, and it's, it's usually the one that's more expensive, but I always have this handy when I am painting portraits because when I have the Cad Red Light hue, it's not as intense, and it seems to have less pigment in it because it has it's missing the cadmium in that. Um, it just doesn't have as much cadmium, that pure pigment. I have cadmium yellow medium and then I have three power colors and so the three power colors that I like to have handy are phthalo green, phthalo blue, and lemon yellow. So there's certain situations where um, I need to use these power colors. Alright and then I've got my brush washing container with Gamsol but you can also use just a small baby food jar. Um, or just a small mason jar with a little bit of Gamsol in it. Um, and then as far as the reference photos go, I talk in another video about how I want you to have two reference photos printed out. Um, this is because we're going to actually draw on one of them. We're going to use one to mark it up with our paintbrush and to use for our color mixing and matching. And so you can use that to literally put the paint on, um, but then you won't be able to see all the details, so then you'll need another reference photo. So that's why I recommend that you have two. Now, I have, let me just show you, I have a Kodak printer, and I printed this out on glossy paper, and I want you to notice the difference, that when I, when I print out a reference photo on glossy paper, it gets more intense, vibrant colors for my reference. When I print it out on um, just regular printer paper, it's it still can have pretty good color, but it's going to be a little bit more dull and it's going to lose some of that vibrancy. Um, for some reason, my fingerprints are taking off some of that ink, so I'm trying to be careful. Um, so another option is to have a computer screen 
or a TV monitor right there with your... Um, so the computer screen, this just happens to be an old, super old Macintosh monitor that I have that about the only thing it's good for now is plugging in a USB and looking at images. Um, it's so outdated, but it still works for this. So I keep this set up next to my painting area and I'm able to really come in and zoom in to the image and really look at a lot of detail. This comes in handy when I'm painting something with lots of tiny parts. And so this comes in handy. So you can also use a TV screen for this. Small TV screens can be bought these days for um, less than $100. So if you have an old TV screen that's actually new enough to have an HDMI port on it, you can get an adapter for your iPhone and you can plug the HDMI adapter into this little gadget here. This is an HDMI adapter. This one's for an iPhone. I'm sure that there, there, there's adapters for Android. Um, but there's a place here where you can plug in your charger and so it can charge while you're using it. But if you're watching and learning from YouTube videos or um, you, you can also pull up your reference photos on the TV screen, Whatever's on your the screen of your device will be on the screen of the TV. So most smart TVs have an HDMI port. And uh, it's also helpful if you want to watch the video, like these training videos or other YouTube videos, while you're working at your easel, then you can play the YouTube video or whatever it is, and you can watch that bigger on the screen instead of trying to look at your little iPhone screen while you're painting. So this is a really helpful device. It really is kind of pricey. I think I got this one for about $50, but it has been really, really nice to have. Okay, so that's really all we need to get ourselves set up in a really small space. And you wanna to try to have a space set up that you can leave. So um, one of the things about Practicing daily is you don't want to have to get everything out again and set it up each time that you have to paint um, because that can really be um, a factor that determines whether you actually sit down to paint or not. So if you can find even just a little space, this is probably a three feet wide space, you know, a little card table or something um, where you could just leave your stuff out and then Go back and paint every day for at least just a little bit. Um, that's the best way. Okay, so before we start drawing and painting on the canvas, I wanna talk to you a little bit about mixing colors. So we're gonna take this reference photo and really dive into how we mix our colors. So I'm gonna give you an introduction to the thought process and mixing and matching your colors to get as close as you can to the realism aspect of the subject that you're painting. 